Would you eat this? Deep sea fish are normally hidden away at the bottom of the ocean, but I've heard that sometimes they can end up on our plates. It's kind of hard to imagine. And I need to see for myself. Inside this mystery box are five deep sea fish I've never seen before. With the help of seafood educator Michael Hulls, I'm going to pick one out for dinner tonight. I'm looking for the ugliest fish in the ocean, which I could never imagine eating. And then I'm challenging my friend, MasterChef winner Justin Narayan, to cook it for us. How is Justin going to make this monstrous fish tasty? The hell am I going to do with this? <laughs> so here we are at 5 a.m. at the fish markets. Whoa. Mostly, deep sea fish end up at Sydney Fish Market because they've been deliberately caught. But sometimes they're bycatch, meaning they're pulled in accidentally. This is more controversial because of potential negative impacts on the populations of deep sea fish. More on this later, but now let's open the mystery box. First one that we see right on top is what's called a red gurner. You know, what's crazy is it's got these legs that's gonna use to walk on the ocean floor. At the tips of those legs, it's gonna have little nodes, like nodes that we have on our tongue so it can actually taste. Can you imagine tasting through your legs or your hands. <laughs> I don't think I want that. Ah, so this is a fish that you don't often see whole in fish shops. Why? Because it's very ugly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is what's called a pink link. Is that mucus? It's almost like a mucusy slime. Wow. Holy moly. This is an Australian hair tail. It looks like a monster. It does. It's like a floating knife in the yeah. water. It's terrifying. And when they're swimming in the water, this dorsal fin will be the uh -huh. only thing that moves. Really? It undulates back and forth. It will line up underneath schools of bait, uh -huh. like this in the water column, practically invisible from the eye above. It will slink down like a spring and then launch up and attack everything that's above it. So these teeth are actually barbed. Once things are on, it's a lot harder for them to pull off. I don't know if I can picture myself eating this one, to be honest. <laughs> uh, oh, so what's this? This is one of my favorites. This is what's called a hapuku. Wow. And they're known to be voracious, voracious feeders. Let's take a look at its mouth there. Whoa! Deep sea fish often have massive mouths. There are less food options down there, so they need to be able to eat anything. They can do something called suction feeding, which is when they open up the mouth and create a low pressure vacuum inside, sucking in water and prey like this is a big eye ocean perch. So this one's gonna actually have these venomous spines here on top that you wanna be careful and not to touch because that'll give you some fish poisoning. It's not gonna kill you, but you do need antibiotics and you wanna not work for a while. It's amazing to see these bizarre deep sea fish up close. So which one will I pick? This is officially the best thing I've ever bought. And what's Chef Justin going to think? Justin, I've got something for wow. you. Tonight's <laughs> dinner is in this box. Ready to see it? Yes, ready to okay, see it. Okay, all right, all right. It's like a... This is a hair tail. Hair tail. What the hell am I gonna do with this? <laughs> this is giving MasterChef mystery box challenge. It's, yeah, it's giving, yeah, PTSD. That's what we call it. <laughs> the first step is to fill up the fish to see what we're working with. There is a little bit of mucus there and the mucus actually protects the fish against disease in the water. There are these special cells in the lining of our nose and throat called goblet yeah. cells, and they may call them mucus, and fish also have these goblet cells in their skin. Wow, that's the most appetizing fact. So okay. I have no idea how to fill it, but I'm just gonna treat it like every other fish, and then I'm just gonna- Whoa, okay. You're doing a really good job. Yeah, look, I surprised myself too. <laughs> The fillets end up looking better than we thought, so we take a little risk and we eat it raw. It's quite sweet. Mm. Very sweet. It's actually not bad. Do you have an idea of what the final dish will be? Uh, to be honest, just the thickness of this fish, mm -hmm. it's already telling you probably not good roasted. It's just gonna overcook. It's like a quick poach type fish, or it is like a grill. I think this would be perfect on the grill barbecue. That would take like- Well, it looks like a piece of eel. 100%. I think just the sweet, spicy, creamy, maybe like a curry sauce with just a really nice grilled piece of fish. The pressure points are cooking that fish perfect and having a sauce that doesn't overpower that fish. What do we got going? We've roasted off the bones just lightly. I've just covered it with water. So we're gonna add that to our curry sauce. So I've kind of got that going. So we've got a whole heap of spices in there, onion, garlic, ginger, some curry leaves, a little bit of coconut milk. And these are kumquats from my mum's garden. I'm gonna use that, incorporate that in the dish. I think that pop of acidity with all the deep savory flavors going on will be really nice. I can't wait to try it. 
Give me 10 minutes, check back in. 10 minutes? Yeah, Okay, done. 10 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. I smelled something really good. That would be the hair tail cooking. So we've got these kumquats here that are like just really nice and acidic and bright. So I'm just gonna fill in these gaps here with some. Ooh. So these are coriander stalks, one little piece Beautiful. there. Is and that, so is that chili? That is chili, a little bit of spice. And then we're just gonna chuck one of these onto the plate. And then this is our sauce. So this is like our curry sauce situation. And then I'm just gonna finish off with some extra virgin olive oil. This is amazing. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah, it. let's get into it. Are you feeling confident that it's gonna be good? I think so. I think, well, this is just, this is just the result of messing around. It was fun, so. What do you feel? How do you feel? Sorry, I just need a moment to myself. Oh my God, it's so good. Mm. You've really transformed this fish from something a little bit terrifying to something extremely delicious. Thank you. You kind of were on that journey with me. The hair towel turned out amazing, kind of unexpected given its weird appearance. But then again, maybe the hair tail and other deep sea fish are just misunderstood. They look weird, but that's just because they're adapted to live in a weird environment. The fish we met today come from stable populations and they're not considered endangered, but sustainability is still an important consideration, especially when we have fishing methods like bottom trawling that impact other species too. If you're interested in eating deep sea species caught sustainably, talking to a fishmonger is a good place to start. What do you think about eating deep sea fish? Thank you.